Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts. Mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Bilderberg Meeting. Contact Report 672 20th Century Bilderberg Conference. The participants of the Bilderberg Conference are allegedly planning a world dictatorship or are masterminds of events steeped in history, such as the Iraq War. False the Bilderberg Conferences are not aimed at a world dictatorship, but at economic, political, military and secret service planning and machinations that are absolutely informal and are described as private and kept as secret as possible. The meetings bring together influential people from business, the military, politics, the media, universities, the high nobility, secret services and Christian churches. The conferences exchange ideas on current political, economic and social issues and take decisions on political, military, secret service economic and Christian religious forms of leadership, etc., some of which are detrimental to the populations of the countries concerned, but also to the populations and the economy of the countries concerned. The conference was launched in May 1954 at the invitation of Prince Bernard of the Netherlands. At that time the conference was held in his own hotel de Bilderberg in Oosterbeek in the Netherlands, after which the name Bilderberg was adopted for these conferences. The original and first reason for the first meeting was based on the fear that Western Europe and North America would work far too little together, as was urgently needed. At least this was the opinion at that time, which has apparently been preserved until today, and secret decisions have been thought up and taken again and again, which among other things are directed against Russia. And since everything is secret, the Bilderbergers are of course also entwined with various conspiracy theories. Billy the Kid Pat Garrett see also contactees, William Henry McCarty Billy the Kid. Contact Report 712 Bernadette should be anxious to illustrate your name Billy with a picture of Billy the Kid, which you received in Tehran in Persia through Judy Reed from Los Angeles. That's because there was no stopping you and you wanted to know what life story was really about Billy the Kid. Consequently, at your request, you were able to go back in time with my father to Billy the Kid and... Meet him when my father told you that one day in the future you would be compared to him and thus be given the name Billy, which would then become known worldwide as a result of your mission. In principle, I have no objection to including the image of Billy the Kid in my biography, if it is explained that he was not the killer he was made out to be, because he was a completely different human being, than he was falsely made out to be after his murder, by the killer sheriff Patrick Floyd Jarvis Garrett and by enemies and fans and know-it-alls, etc., and the whole thing was then also hyped up as a legend. He may have shot a human being in self-defense, who then died of the injury, but he was not a killer. He was a young man who acted only in self-defense and unintentionally shot a man armed with a knife, who wanted to stab him in the stomach in a scuffle. But you yourself know the story of Billy the Kid, so... I think it is better if you tell it yourself as your father Sfath described it, because he recorded everything very precisely in his annals, as you once said. Also important would be the gravestone on the alleged grave of Billy the Kid, by which his fans are misled. I would like to do that, because I think that your objection is justified. But I only want to explain what is necessary, because the whole life story of Billy the Kid would lead too far which is supposed to be largely known through exact traditions, but does not correspond to the truth and therefore does not need to be shown in detail by me. Nevertheless, my elaboration will take some time, 
whereby I will also weave in repetitions, because in order to clarify everything even to a certain extent, some explanations are required. I will also not present what is to be explained in a logical manner according to the chronological sequence of events, as these correspond to my father's records, but simply as they occur to me in the course of the discussion. Contrary to the myths and legends surrounding William Henry McCarty, Billy the Kid, as his real name was, I must declare that the stories that were already circulating widely during his lifetime were, on the whole, pure lies and thus, already from the ground up, fundamentally false chronological falsifications and malicious slander, which were invented and contrived out of pure malice, against Billy the Kid, and which innocently degraded him to the status of a murderous criminal, or elevated him to the status of a hero even during his lifetime. When the so-called Wild West was settled by immigrants, it was an era of evil violence, complacency, and greed for land and wealth, for which not only criminal acts were part of the agenda, but also serious crimes up to and including murder. And such actions and deeds emanated from simple human beings immigrating from Europe and other countries, who settled in the Wild West and in villages and towns as citizens and, of course, also fathered offspring. Simple farmers as well as cattle breeders, so-called ranchers, with large herds of cattle also practiced violence in order to gain land, money, and wealth, whereby murder and manslaughter and cattle wars were also not uncommon, as well as corruption, criminality, and crime in administrations in all states, villages, and towns from which the simple and industrious populations had to suffer and the fact that human beings developed into criminals and offenders out of these conditions was an inevitable consequence, as was also the emergence of injustice and vindictiveness, theft, bank robbery, prostitution, slavery, as well as murder and manslaughter, etc., from which rewards were also offered for the capture of wanted criminals, in the form of bounties, and with the indication, dead or alive. This attracted many conscienceless and money-hungry people who delighted in killing human beings, such as self-appointed lawmen, sheriffs and bounty hunters, or those hired by ranchers, village and town councils, to hunt down delinquents far and wide, bring them to justice, or simply shoot them in cold blood without delay. And that many of these hired or officially elected Lawmen were nothing other than cold-blooded and passionate killers, is also known from the generally well and truthfully documented stories of many gunslingers from the Wild West, such as Wild Bill Hickok, John Wesley Hardin and Wyatt Earp, etc. Their stories, according to my father's swath, are based on very precise clarifications of correctness, as they were also recorded chronologically. This, however, is completely contrary to the lies, myths, and slanderous legends surrounding Billy the Kid, who, as precise clarifications by my father have shown, was slanderously declared to be a killer and criminal due to his youth and membership of murder and cattle-rustling gangs. His bad reputation was further enhanced by the fact that he always defended himself against unjustly inflicted accusations and injustices by offensive words and speeches, which was greatly resented by all his enemies and used to make him all the more a lawbreaker and hounded by dubious lawmen, sheriffs and unscrupulous cold-blooded bounty hunters, among whom was also Pat Garrett by lies and slander and that Patrick Floyd, Jarvis Garrett, had known and hated the young Billy the Kid for a long time, and disliked him from the ground up on the one hand, but also because the boy was friends with Juanita Gutierrez, whom Garrett later married, no one knew, because to the contrary, Garrett spread the rumor that he was good friends with the young William McCarthy. 
So Pat Garrett was looking for a way to kill the boy in a legal, legal manner even before he was appointed sheriff in Lincoln County, New Mexico, and he indulged in bounty hunting. At a later date, Patrick Floyd Jarvis Garrett then went to Washington to seek reappointment to his appointed office. The then U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt then appointed him to the post of Collector of Customs in El Paso, but contrary to all the lies as spread at the time by Garrett himself, and also later by others and ever since, Garrett and Roosevelt were not friends in any way and were not even close acquaintances. Just as Pat Garrett spread this lie about his alleged friendship with Roosevelt, he did the same with regard to the killer stories which he attributed to Billy the Kid, and in doing so, as sheriff also personally falsified various offices, etc., in their documents and written statements, etc. Or had his lying and slanderous truth-distorting distortions carried out by dishonest officials, etc., who were paid by him or bribed with money. In the meantime, when he was doing his dastardly, conniving and murderous business elsewhere than around Billy the Kid, he made a name for himself when he became a buffalo hunter, also murdering a hunting competitor named Joe Briscoe. In Fort Sumner, New Mexico, Garrett then married a young woman named Juanita Gutierrez, who was only a year older than Billy the Kid, with whom she maintained good friendship, but which greatly displeased her intensely jealous and suspicious husband, causing hostility and hatred to surge up in him. This woman, however, then died in childbirth, her death having been insidiously brought about by Garrett, who, shortly before the birth, had given her an apple pulp of small, deadly apples of a manchineal tree. The reason for this was, on the one hand, his jealousy and her friendship with Billy the Kid, and, on the other hand, because in her eighth month of pregnancy, she heard several times during his sleep the speeches he made in his dreams and thereby betrayed himself to her concerning his secret of his murderousness and his intrigues and lying and slanderous machinations against Billy the Kid. And when she confronted her husband Pat Garrett and threatened to report her knowledge to the courts, she sealed her own fate, for he immediately decided for his own safety to kill her at the first opportunity. William Henry McCarthy, however, was the subject of all sorts of atrocious stories of thievery and murder early in his young life. And Pat Garrett was constantly trying to further these and also put him in situations where he was shot and killed. In this, Garrett not infrequently participated in a hidden and clandestine way in the background, practicing his deadly craft, and then blaming the murders he committed on the boy as you are wont to say when someone does something which he then denies and claims that another person did it. Patrick Garrett took a wicked pleasure in sadistically torturing the boy morally and psychologically and acting this out in a dastardly, vile, mean, vile, and hurtful manner and then murdering him when the opportunity arose. In this way, the act of self-defense that Billy the Kid was forced to commit in Arizona became, over time, an alleged series of murders with 21 victims shot by the boy. Unfortunately, Patrick Floyd Jarvis Garrett managed to keep up his criminal face of killing, scheming, lying and slandering until one day. After many years, an old friend who knew the real truth regarding Billy the Kid and the infamous machinations of Pat Garrett decided to take revenge for his murdered friend. Subsequently, unable to carry out the revenge due to his age, he hired a paid hitman to shoot Garrett and keep quiet about the reason for the killing. So I will now only state the true facts as they are, listed in my father's annals and describe everything in relation to Billy the Kid and his acts of murder as they really were, and largely took place in a completely different way to how they were recorded chronologically and also falsified in legends.
I will also begin my interpretation with the gravestone and the false grave. The gravestone at Fort Sumner in New Mexico, which secures a grave behind heavy iron bars, has nothing to do with Billy the Kid, because his last earthly resting place can no longer be determined or located, because his bones were washed away from the cemetery at Fort Sumner in 1904 when the Pecos River flooded. Moreover, the soldiers' bones buried in the cemetery were also moved when the military base there was abandoned, although the bones of Billy the Kid had already been moved from the grave at that time, as my father Sfath had already clarified without any doubt. It cannot be said. However, whether these bones were found again at all, for nothing was known about this and nothing could be clarified, for as a result of the mixing of the collected bones, they could no longer be identified and assigned to any persons. Inevitably, they were mixed with many other bones and reburied after the nearby Pecos River had released some of them after the flooding and reburial had also taken place. When the gravestone for Billy the Kid was erected in the 1930s, chosen by a commission and a decision was made between four different possible burial sites, the choice fell on a fifth site, the one where the gravesite was built. The inscription on the gravestone is of legendary origin, as are many other things, but especially the story of Billy the Kid, which is nothing more than an effectively fictitious and untruthful legend or myth, which has circulated up to the present day and portrays Billy the Kid as a multiple murderer, which in truth he was not, as is clearly refuted by my father's records, because in the past he witnessed every single fatal act by Billy the Kid at the respective time of the events on the spot as a direct observer. Billy the Kid's mother was Catherine McCarty, who lived first in Coffeyville, Kansas, and then in Pueblo, Colorado. Because she suffered from consumption and tuberculosis, she moved to a milder climate namely to Silver City in New Mexico, where she died after a short time on 16th of September 1874 as a result of her incurable disease. William Henry McCarthy, a.k.a. Billy the Kid, had an older brother named Joseph. Consequently, he was born the second son of Irish Protestant immigrants on 24 December in 1862 little more than three years later than has been deliberately conspiratorially claimed since his death. In truth, the correct date of birth was maliciously and purposefully falsified to 23 September 1859 on the one hand and 23 November 1859 on the other by underhand machinations of Sheriff Patrick Floyd Garrett. His reason for doing so was so that he, Garrett, could claim that he had not shot a minor regarding Billy the Kid, but a grown man who had been a multiple killer. But when he murdered him on 14th of July, 1881, the boy was not 21, but only 18, one, two years old. But it was not only Sheriff Pat Garrett who falsified chronological records and spread lies and slander about Billy the Kid, because even after his murder, people continued to lie and slander. And the lying and slandering, as well as the creation, of myths and legends even reached a climax when two men came forward and mendaciously claimed that Billy the Kid had, in fact, because he and Sheriff Patrick Floyd Garrett had allegedly been best friends, not been murdered by Garrett, but had been spared by him and brought to safety. Both men claimed that they were, in fact, Billy the Kid, who had been spared by Pat Garrett, but who had really and actually been murdered with two shots from the killer sheriff's gun, as my father Sfath had witnessed observantly and had also afterwards undoubtedly established the death of Billy the Kid. Note Billy. Revenant, usually a spirit resurrected from death or restless, wandering spirit of a deceased person, with regard to the two revenants mentioned in relation to Billy the Kid, their names are still to be mentioned, such as a certain Ollie Partridge William Roberts, also called Brushy Billy, 
who died in Heiko, Texas, on 27th of December, 1950, as well as a certain John Miller, who ultimately died in Prescott, Arizona, on 7th of November, 1937, and was buried in Pioneer Home Cemetery. So in the course of time, these two persons claimed that they were in fact Billy the Kid and had not been shot by Sheriff Patrick Floyd Garrett because he had been their best friend and had therefore let them go, so that instead of burying them or their body, he had buried that of a strange young man and collected the bounty. What is further listed in my father's annals refers to the fact that Billy the Kid later gave himself other names such as William Henry Bonney, although he rarely called himself William Antrim, after his stepfather, William Henry Antrim, whom his mother married because her husband had been killed in the Civil War. Billy the Kid, my father recorded in his notes, was not a stone-cold murderer, but a very sympathetic young man who was often abused by his stepfather, William Henry Antrim, viciously beaten up, constantly reviled, and also treated unfairly as a victim by other elements who resented him. My father, Sfath, in his annals, judged him to be a very helpful young man who was also attracted to those fellows who were good to him, which he paid with sincere attachment and affection and sincere thanks. He was also willing to work, industrious, honest, and thanked his employers for the kindness they showed him. He valued sincere friendship highly. Consequently, he also always went out of his way for his friends and never left them unnoticed when they were in need of his help. In reality, he was neither malicious nor vengeful and also did not kill 21 human beings, as was always claimed during his lifetime and also after his murder, whereby this legend lie has survived until today. In truth, he killed only one man, but he did not murder him, but shot him in the stomach in self-defense, thereby protecting his own life, as my father was able to clarify without any doubt. In this case, he was not only threatened, but compellingly, faced with the choice of losing his life while still a young man, or fighting back to avoid being killed himself, because the adversary was jaded and calloused to stab Billy the Kid. Billy was an adolescent young man who, on the one hand, was very eager to learn and inquisitive. Consequently, he learned a lot where he could, which is why he was also fluent in Spanish and knew how to read and write, unlike most of his age and background. Thus, despite his young years, he was an educated young man, which was also evidenced by letters from him to Texas Governor Lou Wallace, with whom he was negotiating a pardon. The governor's secretary also said that Billy the Kid's writing was so expressive, eloquent, educated, and eloquent, and also beautiful that it was worth dreaming about. He also told a friend that this boy could have become something great if, on the one hand, he had been able to remain in his mother's care and had not been exposed in his youth to a violent, crude, and criminal world and Above all, if he had not been innocently persecuted, hunted by criminal sheriffs, and murdered by Pat Garrett, whom he knew with certainty to be nothing other than a passionate killer. On the other hand, it was never in the mind of Billy the Kid to want to cope with his life as a lawbreaker, just as he did not seek his own advantages as such, which is why he merely defended himself against injustice and sought to do justice in his own way. And because he was attacked several times and others were willing to kill him, it unfortunately happened that he had to defend his life and defend it in self-defense in a deadly way. This, however, was exactly the opposite of what all those who represented the law or were otherwise on its side, but who in truth were themselves more inclined to crime and criminality than to honesty and correct citizenship, were striving for. And it was these who criminalized Billy the Kid and discriminated against him as a criminal and killer and ensured that he was pursued and hunted by lawmen who were often in truth nothing more than bounty hunters or bounty killers, and made a lot of money with their bloody trade.
This, while others admired Billy the Kid, exalted him and tried to make him into something better than he really was on the one hand, and on the other hand did not want to be, through exaggerated praise, undeserved emphasis, and undue importance, giving him undue value. With regard to all the many murders attributed to him, it was the case that these were imputed to him on the basis of his repeated escapes from the law, which, however, were really only based on pure suspicions and could, of course, never be proven against him. He was also subsequently convicted in absentia as a murderer on 17th August, 1877. With regard to his involvement in criminal gangs, etc., he was never one of those gang members who murdered, for he always refrained from doing so and only acted as if he were shooting at human beings, although in truth he only shot into the air without exception in such actions, as my father Sfayath was able to ascertain for himself with absolute clarity when he observed every single case at the respective places of the events and checked everything. The fact is that in the autumn of 1871 at Fort Grant in Arizona, in the George Adkins Saloon, where he called himself Henry Antrim, he severely wounded with a revolver shot a local blacksmith named Frank Windy Cahill, who had immigrated from Galway, Ireland, because he was involved in a brawl with him and the latter wanted to stab him. This was the first man Billy the Kid shot down when he was still a minor, which was also officially confirmed, and it was also the last and only man to be killed by him. In this incident... Numerous persons also testified that he had acted in self-defense and that he had only defended his life, while other eyewitnesses who were not well disposed towards him accused him of murder against all truth and lied that the Huffschmidt had been unarmed and had been shot down without resistance. However, when my father's father, in retrospect or in the past, personally observed the incident, he realized the truth in that the blacksmith was very much armed and was about to plunge a large knife into the stomach of Billy the Kid, also shouting that he was going to kill him. To this, my father wrote that when the blacksmith was about to bring his raised and knife-armed fist down on the boy lying on the ground, whom he had already knocked to the ground and who was lying defenseless on the ground, he shouted, Now, you dog, I'll stab you note. This, of course, struck fear into the boy and caused him, as if in a trance of self-preservation, to reach for his revolver, which he carried in his waistband, and shoot the man in the stomach. The knife thrust by the man against him would indeed have been fatal, and therefore not only life-threatening, as my father was able to judge after a precise clarification, as his records also clearly show, as well, that the eyewitnesses, who were friends of the blacksmith, concealed this dangerous knife attack of the blacksmith, and also removed the knife, in order to then accuse Billy the Kid of murder with lies and false statements, who could not do anything against the brawny man, and against whose knife thrust he would have had no chance of survival. Cahill, the farrier, was a brawny man of about 180 centimeters in height and weighed over 100 kilos while Billy the Kid was only about 160 centimeters tall and weighed no more than about 65 kilos, and who, moreover, had been attacked and insulted by the farrier several times before the brawl because he did not like Billy. On this momentous day, however, Cahill knocked Billy the Kid to the ground and called him a pimp and the son of a whore and a slut because he was dressed not like a native or a cowboy, but like a city slicker. The vicious name-calling set the boy on fire, so he also called the blacksmith names and called him Dog Son, who then attacked Billy, kicked and punched him violently, resulting in a fight which led to the dangerous knife attack by Cahill, which resulted in the latter being severely shot in the stomach, which later proved fatal for him in hospital. However, before Cahill died in hospital, he vehemently denied that he had viciously and shamefully insulted attacked and attempted to murder with a knife Billy the Kid, who, after being shot, was able to crawl out from under the heavy-set blacksmith who had fallen on top of him, quickly rise and flee from the saloon and from the mob who were chasing him. Despite the lies of the eyewitnesses, however, 
He did not have to explain himself in answer to a court of law, and that was because he never returned to the state of Arizona. Billy the Kid also absconded several times when he was arrested and imprisoned. Charles, he also changed his name to William H. Bonney. Hers, he was also called a killer and a criminal. Hers, he was constantly pursued by law enforcement officers, such as sheriffs. Hers, he was hunted down like a wild animal. This was also the case with Sheriff Pat Garrett, who on the one hand was never a friend of Billy the Kid, and on the other hand was a money-hungry bounty hunter and passionate killer, as was common in the so-called Wild West of the time, which meant that many so-called lawmen and official sheriffs were effective killers, whose joy and purpose in life was to mercilessly and conscienselessly murder human beings. This corresponded to a degeneracy that has remained with many lawmen, sheriffs and police officers in various states of the USA to this day. Just as bounty hunting is still commonplace in the USA today, albeit in a modified form. Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid were not cut from the same cloth, as you sometimes say on certain occasions, because it is correct to say, according to my father's notes, that they both knew each other. But this acquaintance through Garrett consisted of a dislike for the young William Henry McCarty alias Billy the Kid, so that there was no friendship, but a state of dislike and hatred which, however, emanated unilaterally from Garrett, which put an extremely heavy strain on Billy. Garrett was constantly following Billy the Kid, sneaking up behind him and repeatedly causing bad situations in order to harm him and drive him into conflicts. This also happened after Pat Garrett became Lincoln County Sheriff in 1880, and he hunted him down mercilessly. After which, the boy fled to Mexico, but soon returned. After which, Patrick Floyd Garrett arrested him once again, this time with witnesses present, so he could not just shoot him without fighting back. On the 13th of April, 1881, Billy the Kid was then sentenced to death by the Lincoln District Court, with Garrett contributing lies and slander. The death sentence, however, was not enough for Pat Garrett, so he deviously freed the condemned man in prison and let him escape, so that he could hunt him down again and finally kill him himself in his hatred. The arranged escape, however, did not succeed in the way he wanted, because unexpectedly two sheriffs confronted him and Billy the Kid, who also took up the chase, but were then shot by Pat Garrett, because they had recognized him and also wanted to hand him over to justice as an escape helper, or if necessary, kill him. Of course, it could not be otherwise than that Garrett blamed the two murders on Billy the Kid, who, as an escapee from prison, was of course unarmed. And also this time, the escape of William Henry McCarthy led to Mexico, where he was murdered by Garrett on July 15, 1881, with two shots in the back, which he boasted about afterwards and declared publicly that he had shot him without warning. Namely, when Billy the Kid left his bedroom unarmed and half-dressed to get something to drink. The lust for murder and the joy of murder early in Pat Garrett's life also resulted in the fact that he not only shot Billy the Kid without warning, but also two other men before him, whom he had supposedly mistaken for Billy and collected a bounty on, but buried them himself. But the truth was that he killed the men, just to pursue the joy of his passion for murder and to collect the reward. Then when he viciously shot Billy the Kid in cold blood, the truth was basically that Billy had been denied a fair, honest trial in every single case all those times before but was convicted of being a murderer and a rustler, etc., despite his proclaimed innocence through him. And that this was so was known to many righteous people. Consequently, his death was also received with sadness and anger, precisely by those many people who knew him and his true nature and actions really well, and also knew that the Sheriff Pat Garrett was a vicious, cold-blooded and money-hungry bounty hunter and passionate serial killer that is to say a killer. So it also turned out that he was notorious in this respect, and he was also treated like a leper by the righteous population. Effectively, Billy the Kid was an industrious young, honest and decent man. Consequently, he also worked for cattle ranchers, such as one named John Cheesham, another named Lawrence G. Murphy, and later for an English rancher whose name was John Tunstall, but who was then murdered in what was called the Lincoln County Cattle War aided and abetted by the corrupt official of the city of Lincoln. 
When it came to avenging Tunstall's death, Billy the Kid also took part as a follower, though, as usual, he refrained from being an avenger and killing himself. The avenging murderers were two men, with whom Billy the Kid also stayed on and went with them to Steel Springs, New Mexico, where the two murderers were shot in his presence on 9th of March, 1878. He was only involved as a follower without any personal involvement, as in all other cases in which he was slanderously accused of involvement in murders, and this was also the case when the corrupt sheriff William Brady and his deputy and assistant George Hindman were shot in Lincoln on 1st April 1878 after they had been lured into an ambush. Also, when a man named Buckshot Roberts was killed in a shootout at Blazer's Mill on 4th April, Billy the Kid was present. But as always before, he was as uninvolved in the man's death as he was in the deaths of other human beings in the decisive Battle of the Lincoln County War from 15 to 19th in July 1878. As always, he had only fired blindly into the air to keep up the pretense of also killing in order to maintain comradeship with the gang members and to be seen as an equal. In return, however, the reward of certain public figures was that he became more and more known as a conscienceless gunman and killer, and was thus hounded all over the country by killer-happy and money-hungry lawmen, sheriffs and bounty hunters, also by the killer Patrick Floyd Jarvis Garrett, who was eventually elected sheriff and specifically set upon Billy the Kid, whom he ultimately murdered in an insidious manner. Pat Garrett himself was also later murdered on 28th of February 1908 near Las Cruces, New Mexico, by a hired killer named Jesse Wayne Brazel. Note, Jesse Wayne Brazel's nephew, William Ware McBrazel, was the man upon whose ranch the Roswell UFO crash occurred in 1947. Finally, it is important to note that Billy the Kid was a young man who was often abused and argued with by his stepfather which led him to learn to play cards in saloons at an early age, where he also had to defend himself against a blacksmith who tried to stab him. The legend that he was 12 years old at the time and stabbed the man is only true insofar as the man had previously insulted his mother, whom the boy adored, as a whore and slut. On the one hand, he was already 15 years old at the time, on 17th of August 1877, and on the other hand, he had not stabbed the blacksmith, but shot him in the stomach in self-defense, after which he died in a hospital. Billy the Kid was actually constantly on the run until his violent death, but not so involved in shootings that he would have had to kill. He also saved settler families from Indians, joined gangs without ever killing any other human beings, also stole cattle because he was not paid his due wages for the work he had done, and was therefore innocently sentenced to death. The last time he escaped from prison, with the help of his nemesis sheriff Pat Garrett, the latter finally used the opportunity to shoot him in an underhanded manner. How the whole thing happened was described in detail by the murderer himself in a book, because he wrote that Billy the Kid stepped out of the room of his Mexican mistress, Celsa Gutierrez, to go over to the house of his friend Pete Maxwell to get something there. As he did so, he had dimly spotted two figures on the veranda and asked in Spanish, which he knew well, Quién es? Quién es? Note, who is there? But there was only his assassin waiting and lurking, who struck him down with two shots, killing him. After all the very accurate clarifications made by my father Svath, not many bodies went to the account of Billy the Kid, but only the blacksmith Frank Windy Cahill whom he effectively shot in self-defense. This was clearly clarified by my father. However, tall tales and tall legends speak of 21 human beings whom he is said to have killed, while others assume nine, but four others are said to be genuine and given, two of which are said to have been acts of self-defense. But none of this corresponds to the truth, because in the life of Billy the Kid, according to my father's extremely precise clarifications, only one human being was killed by him, namely, the blacksmith. It is therefore clear that all the stories that have been told since the death of William Henry McCarthy and have become legend are in fact untrue, lies, fictions, and fantasy. The only thing that is certain being that the young man, Billy the Kid, was already made into a legend during his lifetime, 
and then even more so after his death. What has been said corresponds to what I have read in my father's Sfath Annals, in which he has meticulously described what he observed, experienced, learned, and recorded and handed down with his written notes through his investigations and clarifications in the past on the spot of what happened to Billy the Kid. And what is also to be mentioned is the content of a letter from a gang member and friend of Billy the Kid, which he wrote to Pat Garrett, and also sent to the city and court officials, as well as to various publications, but which was never heeded and not publicly published in order to promote the concealment of the truth and the profit-making legend. Jesse Evans, a former gang member, had his letter typeset and printed in a small workshop in 1884 and also distributed to people on the streets in various places, but to no avail, because as a friend of Billy the Kid and a member of a gang, Jesse Evans' statements were not accepted. My father was able to get hold of one of these letters and has kept it, which I have had translated for you and now want to read to you. Pat Garrett, you are the murderer of Billy the Kid. The undeniable fact is that you... Sheriff are the real criminal behind the story of Willem Henry McCarty, alias Billy the Kid, because you, as a killer and bounty hunter, murdered him out of jealousy and hatred. I say this to you, Garrett, I, Jesse Evans, for I have been an eyewitness on several occasions when you, Garrett, have murdered and attributed these acts of murder to Billy the Kid. Pat Garrett I accuse you of claiming that Billy the Kid murdered 21 human beings, even stabbing his first victim at the age of 12, which, like all your lies, is untrue. You know very well that Billy shot the man in self-defense. The blacksmith called Frank Windy Cahill when he tried to kill him with a knife, after which he later died, and Billy was already 15 years old at the time. As a friend of Billy's, I always knew that he was not a murderer even if he did join our gang and shoot wildly, but never at human beings, only aimlessly into the air. The lies that Billy killed and murdered are all your fault. Garrett, because you, Pat Garrett, are the one who spread them in the first place, and then again and again for years, as well as all the other monstrous untruths that were spread everywhere by you until many believed your lies and an evil legend was created. And you, Garrett, did this only out of ardent jealousy and malicious hatred? Because Billy had a friendship with your lover, Juanita Gutierrez, two years younger than you, whom you, Pat, wanted as your wife and impregnated her, after which you also married her in 1877. But after only a few months, she died in strange circumstances in the miscarriage of her child. After that, Garrett, you married her sister, Apollinaria Gutierrez, who was a year younger and with whom you also began an intimate relationship early on. Garrett, you were the ringleader of the worst of the lies and falsehoods that you not only spread about Billy the Kid, but also many others who are still in bondage to you or are acquaintances or friends of yours, as well as those who are acquaintances and friends of those you murdered and then claimed, and then claimed that they were killed by Billy including the corrupt Sheriff William Brady and his equally corrupt Deputy George Hindman, as well as several other people who murdered, who you then ambushed and shot, and also blamed those acts on Billy, which he never had anything to do with. And because of all your lies, Garrett, Billy became the subject of an unparalleled tall tale and legend. Then, Garrett, when you were appointed Sheriff of Lincoln County, even though you were a killer and a bounty hunter, you spread the lie far and wide that Billy the Kid was your best friend, but that as a lawman, you had no right to take that friendship into account, and therefore had to bring the lawbreaker to justice. This, in order to conceal the fact that you were bottomlessly jealous of him, hated him viciously, and therefore wanted to murder him. Therefore you, Garrett, discredited him more and more as an outlaw and murderer, and did everything to be able to shoot him in self-defense one day. Then, when you were appointed sheriff and set upon Billy, your aspirations were fulfilled, for you were now able to kill him legally. And knowing that Billy was not yet an adult, but still a boy, you claimed that he was older and already an adult. Since the unrest and lawlessness in Lincoln County were great, and the population decided to put an end to this goings-on, you, Garrett, were finally elected sheriff on January 1st, 1880 despite your bad reputation as a bounty hunter, or precisely because of it, 
and assigned to hunt down and kill Billy the Kid. By then, several other lawmen of your ilk had attempted this, who were also, like yourself, Garrett Lawmen, only by virtue of the sheriff's badge, but in reality were killers and bounty hunters who murdered far and wide. So you, Garrett, hunted Billy until you finally, when he was completely unarmed and drunk asleep, murdered him with two shots on 14th of July, 1881, which I can testify to because I witnessed it myself, but had to flee because you had your personal killer dogs, devoted to you, posted all around, and you were also after me and wanted to kill me as well. But since the killing of a boy who has not yet grown up does not conform to our laws of the land, but is tantamount to outright murder, you, Garrett, began with a glorification of your nefarious deed to Billy. You did not want to be seen as a conscienceless, vile, reprehensible, and unscrupulous murderer of your alleged friend, which is why you, Garrett, spread the lie that Billy was armed. But with that and many other lies, you, Garrett, caused even worse stories about Billy to be circulated, and ultimately twenty-one murders to be blamed on him, for which were never held accountable, which is why I will take revenge on you for your murder of Billy. And if I cannot do it myself, then sooner or later I will find and pay someone to judge you, you murderer of my friend Billy, and bring justice. But apart from that, the fact is that you still claim and lie today that you shot your supposed best friend in self-defense because he was a multiple horrible murderer, and as a lawman, you were compelled to kill him because he pointed his gun at you, Garrett, and supposedly wanted to shoot you. But Billy would never have done that, because he was not a murderer. Thus, with this vile lie, you, Garrett, believe that his murder would not look like a ruthless and cold-blooded act, which it was, as I observed for myself. You, Garrett, years before the murder of my friend Billy, whose name was William Henry McCarty, spread outrageous false accusations against him, accusing him of multiple murders, which he was never guilty of, but which you actually committed yourself. This led to further legends about the number of alleged murders around him, which you, Garrett, have raised to a total of 21, and Billy is therefore supposed to have killed so many human beings, which he never did. But how malicious and brazen you are, Garrett, and how you spread these and other lies and untruths about Billy and imputed wicked monstrosities to him and thereby destroyed his young life is also shown by the lies that have been spread and written about him since his murder by you. Also that Billy was born on 23rd of November 1859 is nothing but a lie, for he was born on 24th of December 1862, as his mother once told me in person. The 23rd of November, 1859, however, was only chosen by you, Garrett, because Billy would then already have been 21 years old at the time of his murder, and otherwise it would have become known that you had shot an 18-year-old and that you, Garrett, had known this. Again I say that Billy, to whom you, Garrett, yourself gave the name Billy the Kid early on, was not a murderer, but nevertheless, he died by your assassin's bullet because you, had wanted to kill him for years out of hatred and jealousy, and were looking for a way to be able to do so with impunity. But that you, Garrett, betrayed yourself and convicted yourself of lying, namely that you knew that Billy was still a boy when you called him Billy the Kid, is something that the stupid people have unfortunately not understood. And it must also be clarified that I was also present as a witness in the saloon when Billy defended himself in self-defense and shot the blacksmith named Frank Cahill, who then died. Billy had to defend himself and shoot him in self-defense, because otherwise, he would have been killed himself. And I can testify to that because I was also present in the saloon and saw everything when it happened. And all the murders that have been blamed on Billy during his life by you, Garrett who, contrary to him, are a conscienceless and depraved killer and bounty hunter, he never committed a murder. And though I am an outlaw, Billy was not even when he ran with our gangs. He was a good human being and my only real friend, which is why I'm going to kill you, Garrett, as his killer one day like this, or shoot you, Garrett, down, or if necessary, if I cannot do it, have you, Garrett, killed like you did Billy. And I will do that 
even though I may have to wait years to find the opportunity. That, Garrett, I swear to you, I, Jesse Evans, who will kill you or have you killed by others. This is really all sorts of things, and Svath never told me about this, but it is all very instructive, and it contradicts all the myths and legends and reveals a completely different human being, Billy the Kid and also a completely different story than has been told and written for some 150 years. On the one hand, your father's Svath told me all kinds of things that he himself had experienced in the past, just as Billy the Kid made a few things clear to me during my journey through his past, because even as a boy I was interested in who he really was, precisely because Svath told me that I would once be compared to Billy, and then be named after him in Persia, which is what actually happened. But perhaps I should say something about the story of Billy the Kid, what really happened in those days in the so-called Wild West, with regard to gunslingers and gunfights, and in a completely different way than has always been misrepresented in Western films and gives a completely false picture. That will also take some time to do, if you are not in a hurry, Pta. That is not the case. And on the other hand, I will be happy to listen and probably learn a few things in the process, because I myself have had little exposure to the wild days and events in the American West. However, I would now like to suggest to Bernadette that she include in your biography the circumstances of how your surname Billy came about, as well as a page-perfect overall image of Billy the Kid, which was created in 1879 as a pharotype which was a common direct positive process in the 19th century to produce a photograph, the only one that could be made by a photographer at the time, and which is still distributed page-perfect today. I would also like to have a portrait of him when he was 15 years old, and you were able to meet him together with my father Svath in the past, which was taken two years earlier in the spring of 1877, but was not distributed. I will let you find this largely unknown picture of him, after which you only have to copy it and give it to Bernadette. 